So hi, Microbe Hunter here and today let's go not microbe hunting but bear hunting. As a matter of fact, I want to show you today how you can find those little water bears that you can see behind me. And not only that, I'm also going to explain to you towards the end of this video of why those little water bears can now also be found on the moon. A rather unusual story I have to tell you. Well, first of all, those little water bears, they basically are unusual in the sense that these are micro animals. They have eight legs and uh, they are well known because they are quite, uh, they are quite resilient. This means they can withstand uh, quite extreme environmental conditions. For example, low temperature, extreme pressure or lack of pressure um, and also radiation. And when they have lost water, when they dry up, they're able to survive for many years without water in a dry state and then when it rains again well then they're able to absorb the water they swell up again and they can continue to live as a matter of fact I made a separate video on, on that where I uh, allowed tardigrades to dry up and then come back to life again I put a link into the description and at the end of the video in the end titles uh, you can also click on the link uh, to this video well, tardigrades are so-called pioneer animals and uh, this means that uh, when there has been a natural disaster like a the volcanic eruption for example where everything's destroyed everything's burned up tardigrades are one of the first animals to resettle there in this new environment because they are able to survive uh, under very extreme conditions and uh, scientists of course um, have uh, found this out uh, quite early already and they have done some interesting experiments uh, with tardigrades so for example they sent them up into space uh, around earth uh, and uh, after some time uh, they were able to see that the cosmic radiation that they were exposed to did not harm them, harm them at all and they were able to continue to live now tardigrades uh, shows uh, something that you call utility this utility is uh, the concept or the idea that these uh, animals within the same species they have the same number of body cells we humans for example uh, different humans have a different number of body cells but tardigrades always have the same number around 40,000 cells per adult uh, animal some more some less but the number of cells within a species is always the same when people first see tardigrades under the microscope they usually say oh they're so cute they look so nice and cute but actually only when you see them from the side because uh, from the front uh, if you look at their round mouth and uh, they, they can look actually more like uh, like science fiction monsters um, but they don't, don't do any harm uh, they eat bacteria they also eat uh, plant material well and some tardigrades also do eat each other they're cannibalistic uh, so you see that also here uh, nature is very very diverse. Now who discovered uh, tardigrades? Well there are probably two people who have first uh, seen tardigrades. Uh, the German naturalist with a long name Johann Konrad Eichhorn was probably the first person to have uh, seen them and this was in 10th of June 1767 but he did not uh, tell anyone about his discovery. Only eight years later he published uh, something and uh, in that book he mentioned uh, that he has seen those tardigrades before. Um, however, in those eight years, in the meantime, a second German naturalist with an equally complicated name, Johann August Ephraim Goese, uh, on 10th of December 1772, he also saw those tardigrades under his microscope and he described uh, in the chapter of the book that he wrote, he described in very much detail how they look like and also how he discovered them. And he, that's why we also know the exact day when he has seen those tardigrades. He checked all of the indexes uh, he mentioned and he could not find any other animal with that description. So he concluded that it must be um, a new animal. And uh, I found after a little bit of research his publication on the internet, his book on the internet. Now the writing is written in old German print, it's called the Fraktur font. A little bit difficult to read. Um, I had uh, to read quite slowly but I was able to understand the content and the book is very fascinating and fun to read. It's written almost like a blog post, honestly, in a very colloquial uh, manner. Um, yeah, so maybe it's like the internet of the 18th century almost. Um, and here, here in this book he described his discoveries and also the little experiments that he has done with uh, these microscopic animals. And what I would like to do now is I would like to now quote and cite something from the book uh, where he described how he has found those tardigrades. 
and he wrote strange are these animals because the total shape of its body is extraordinary and strange and because its external shape its external appearance at first sight has a strong resemblance to a small beer this caused me to give it the name of small water beer Meanwhile, one should not be afraid to also observe these predators of the invisible world. And then Goethe, in his chapter, he continued and he described how he used a small needle to turn the tardigrade back on its feet and it always kept on falling over. And then he also saw that the tardigrade had a small injury on its back and then later it died. And then he wrote the following. I have thus concluded that also the small water animals are capable of sensing and of feeling pain. I think this is uh, quite a remarkable uh, comment as well. Now, um, among scientists, uh, the position of the tardigrades um, has been a little bit disputed over the years. Um, at the very beginning, uh, scientists thought that the tardigrades belong to the so-called wheeled animals, no so-called rotifers, which can also be commonly found in a water sample. Um, and then later on, uh, scientists reclassified them and said, well, they're probably more related to the sea spiders. Well, I don't think that they look like spiders at all, uh, but maybe because both sea spiders and tardigrades have eight legs, I think this might be the reason. But it was actually much later that uh, the Italian tardigologist, yes, this is actually a job description, Giuseppe Ramazzotti, he made the tardigrades a separate phylum, a separate group of animals. So they are, yeah, completely, yeah, they're different from the insects and from the vertebrates, for example. And this kind of shows that tardigrades do indeed have a somewhat unique position in the whole tree of life. Um, I would now like to show you how I uh, found those tardigrades in a very unusual place. Well, in order to collect the tardigrades, I made myself a little plastic container and attached uh, a little bit of weight on the bottom because I, I was collecting water samples from where? From here. This is the place. Uh, this is the home of the tardigrades. Uh, I found this, uh, yeah, place over there. This is a garage where cars actually are on top so that you can fix the cars from the bottom, but it's not used anymore. And over the weeks and months, rainwater has accumulated. And I saw that there was duckweed growing on the water. Duckweed, these are green water plants on the surface. I was already wondering how in the world do they get enough light for photosynthesis? Immediately I had to think of that. But then again, I said, okay, I got to take a water sample and put it under the microscope. And uh, so I lowered the little plastic container, I collected some water, a lot of duckweed, of course, also came along, uh, a good place uh, for a variety of microorganisms. And then uh, I collected some of these water samples, took it home and uh, put it under the microscope. And this is where then I found not one, not two, but three tardy grays on one microscope slide. Uh, so it was a very successful, um, it was a very successful undertaking. If you want uh, to um, observe tardigrades yourself, I recommend that you collect some moss and that you rinse out uh, the tardigrades using a little bit of water um, and uh, or at least uh, dip the moss uh, on your microscope slide with a little bit of water and then the tardigrades are going to be rinsed out and then you can also observe them under the microscope. And as I promised you, now tardigrades can be found on the moon as well. Well, how is this possible? Well, it was in April 2019 uh, when they sent a space probe to the moon for doing scientific exploration. But there was a time capsule on the space probe. And uh, in this time capsule, they included a few thousand tardigrades um, and also um, yeah, a copy of the Encyclopedia Wikipedia, also some human DNA. So for future generations to be preserved on the moon. But unfortunately, the space probe something went wrong and the space probe crashed on the moon scattering all of the things uh, yeah, and all of the tardigrades um, yeah, onto the moon surface and I think that maybe after some time when uh, astronauts uh, visit the moon again I'm quite sure that they're going to try to look for those uh, tardigrade uh, samples um, and maybe they're able to also bring them back uh, to life um, again scientists are quite sure that they must have survived. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video again. There is somewhere this subscribe button and a like button that you might want to click. <laughs> In any case, I would also like to thank my Patreon supporters here. I wish you all the best and happy microbe hunting as always. And I'll see you around next time. Bye bye.